Hey everybody, welcome to my home classroom. It's Miss Lang. Super weird not being at school with you guys, but I'm really excited to get started with our online learning and our remote learning from home. I think it's gonna be a really cool adventure. Let's get started. So we are going to talk about writing right now and we're actually gonna be heading back to an idea that we talked about at the beginning of this year. A long time ago, we had talked about using our five senses to be able to make ourselves better writers and help our readers be able to see what we are talking about when we do our writing. Sometimes as writers, we think that our reader can see exactly what we see in our head, and that's just not always true. We want to use our five senses to be able to describe what we see in our head with our mind movie to help our readers see what we see. Our five senses are, to remind you, sight, smell, taste, hearing, and feeling with our hands. When you go to write, we want to think about these different elements and our what we call sensory details. I'm going to show you a quick chart of some examples of sensory details that you can use in your writing. Right here are some examples of sensory details. When we think of taste, you might think of sweet, sour, spicy, bitter. Think of foods that you taste. When you think of sight, things you're seeing, you see colors and shapes, how big and small something is, if it's dirty or clean. When you're hearing something in your story, you might hear something really, really loud or really high. Maybe someone's silent or really quiet. When you touch something, maybe it's really soft. Maybe it's really hard cold, wet, warm, smell, something smells sweet, maybe it smells really yummy or tasty, or maybe it's gross and disgusting. These different examples are things that you could use in your writing to help your reader be able to see what you are talking about. Here's two small examples. In our first one, it says the cat was here. If I was the reader of this story, I wouldn't know where the cat was because I haven't seen where you, the writer, may have seen this cat. So I, as a writer, I might go back. I'm gonna add some details, some sensory details in to be able to help my reader see. So I added the black cat. Black is gonna be one of our sight words. Was sitting on the hard, that would be something that we would feel or touch, concrete step. Those two words help our readers see a little bit more about where the cat is actually at like we are seeing it. The second example is the cake was good. I'm sure the cake was good, but what kind of cake? What is, where was it? What did it smell like? So I went back and I added to my sentence and I said the chocolate cake smelled. So that's getting into our sense of smelling, right? Yummy coming out of the oven. Those sensory details help our reader to be able to see exactly what we are talking about. Here's another really good example that I had found that I wanted to share with you guys. This one is all about, I believe, a baseball game that somebody went to. And I know I really miss sports, so I thought it'd be a good one for us to think about. So use your senses. Look for the senses words that you can see while I read. As we walked into the stadium, I could feel the excitement of the crowd. The lights were on and it highlighted the bright green grass in the stadium section to our left. The fans were chanting in unison, we love ya, we love ya, we love ya, and we'll go, we'll follow, we'll follow, we'll follow. Nobody seemed to mind that there was a chill in the air. We knew we'd be kept warm by the energy and enthusiasm of our fellow spectators. Now what I would do is after maybe I had written this, I'm going to go back and look for those feeling sensory details in my writing. So first one that I notice is up here. I put a sticky note by it for feel so that we could kind of notice it. But maybe as I was reading, you saw that one of the first ones is I could feel the excitement of the crowd. You can feel that they did a nice job explaining that feeling. Next one I'm going to go look at. I'm going to keep going. I say, oh, seeing the lights were on and it highlighted the bright green grass. I can really see how the lights are making the stadium look 
because the author really helped me see that as I was reading. The next one, we're going to keep going down in the stadium section to our left. The fans were chanting. Chanting is a word that we might use for hearing. Maybe you've heard people chant before. They do it in unison. So we're able to see right here that the fans were saying, we love you, we love you, we love you, and we'll go, we'll follow, we'll follow, we'll follow. You can picture fans saying that out loud to the team as they're getting onto the field. Last one. So this person decided to use feeling twice. And you can use the same sense multiple times in your writing. That is okay. Right down here where it says, nobody seemed to mind that there was a chill in the air. We've all been out in the Michigan weather and have felt it be really cold. So being able to feel the chill in the air is another good example of using those five senses. Now what I want you to do is after you have done your reading lesson and looked at enemy pie, there are some great examples in that story of how the author Derek Munson used sensory details in his writing to make it more descriptive and better to see for all of you as the reader. I want you to go back and look for examples of that in the story and answer one of them in the question your teacher has left you. And the second thing is you're going to do your own writing and it is either a story about how you would do activities with someone you're getting to know better, that's your first option, or your second option would be writing a letter to a friend that you like to be around. Maybe it's someone from class, maybe it's someone in your neighborhood, whoever it may be. And you're going to tell them why you like having them as a friend and things that you like to do with them. And you're gonna use your five sensory details to be able to describe and help your reader be able to see. Hope you guys have a good rest of your day and I hope you're doing well and I'll see you next time for our next writing lesson. Bye.